After 14 years I discovered my son wasn't mine. Then, he revealed a shocking truth about his real parents. I never imagined I would be writing something like this. My entire world has been turned upside down, and I'm struggling to make sense of everything. I suppose the best place to start is at the beginning. Until yesterday, I believed my life was going pretty well. I'm 35 years old, married to my wife Rebecca, for 14 years, and we have a 14-year-old son Adam. When Rebecca found out she was pregnant, we decided to get married. Although fatherhood wasn't in my plans, I embraced it wholeheartedly. From the moment Adam was born, I loved him with everything in me. I witnessed his first steps, heard his first words, and celebrated every milestone in his life. To provide for Adam, I worked two jobs. It wasn't always easy, but I never complained. Isn't that what dads do? I wanted to be the best father I could. I never missed Adam's soccer games, helped with his homework, and taught him how to ride a bike. Every summer, we went camping together, just the two of us. Those trips are some of my fondest memories. I wasn't perfect, but I always put my family first. I made sure Adam had everything he needed for school, even if it meant skipping lunch. Last year, I saved for months to buy him the latest gaming system for his birthday, and his joy when he opened it made every extra shift worth it. Like any relationship, Rebecca and I had our ups and downs, but I thought we were happy. Just last month, we celebrated our 14th wedding anniversary with a special dinner at home. Adam even made us a card, which we proudly displayed on the fridge. At least it was there before yesterday. Yesterday started like any other day. I worked my first job in the morning and my second in the afternoon. I couldn't wait to get home and have dinner with my family. But when I walked through the door, something felt off. The house was unusually quiet. Normally, Rebecca would be in the kitchen, and Adam would either be watching TV or playing video games. But there was nothing, no sounds, no smells, just silence. I called out for them, but there was no response. I thought maybe Adam had headphones on, so I went to check his room, but it was empty. Some of his favorite books and clothes were missing. My heart began to race as I headed to our bedroom. That's when I saw the note on the bedside table. Rebecca's handwriting was unmistakable. My hands were shaking as I picked it up to read. In the note, Rebecca explained that she and Adam had left. But that wasn't the worst part. She revealed that Adam wasn't my biological son. She had an affair with another man just before we started dating. When she found out she was pregnant, she assumed the baby was mine. She convinced herself it was true because she wanted it to be. But now, after 14 years, Adam's biological father had come back into the picture. Rebecca wrote that he wanted to be part of their lives, and she had decided to let him. She said Adam deserved to know his real father. I couldn't breathe. The room was spinning. I sat down, trying to process what I had just read. How could this be happening? What had Rebecca done to me? To us? I kept reading, hoping for an explanation that would make sense of it all. Rebecca apologized for lying all these years. She admitted she was scared of losing me and raising Adam alone. She said Adam's biological father, David, was wealthy and could give them a better life. She wrote that Adam was excited to meet his biological father and start a new life. For the past 14 hours, I've been trying to understand everything. I've gone through every emotion, shock, anger, despair and betrayal. I've cried more in the last day than I have in my entire life. Every time I think about Adam, I remember the moments we shared, teaching him how to tie his shoes, staying up all night when he had the flu, cheering him on at his soccer games. Were all those memories a lie? Did Adam ever suspect anything? Did Rebecca ever hint at it? We had a great relationship, or so I thought. Now, I'm questioning everything. I've tried calling and texting Rebecca and Adam, but their phones are off. I even drove to Rebecca's parents' house, hoping they might be there, but there was no sign of them. My whole life feels like a lie. For 14 years, I've been a husband and a father, dedicating everything to my family. And now, in an instant, it's all gone. I don't know what to do. The house feels so empty without them. I can't concentrate on anything, so I've taken a few days off work. I keep hoping this is just a nightmare, and that when I wake up, they'll be here. There's a part of me that wants to fight. Even though I'm not Adam's biological father, I've raised him for 14 years. Doesn't that count for something? But then I think about Rebecca's betrayal, and I wonder if I'll ever be able to trust her again. I've thought about hiring a lawyer, 
but I don't even know where to start. Do I have any rights? Can Rebecca just take Adam away like this? I've also thought about trying to find them, but I don't know if that's the right thing to do. Should I interfere if Adam wants to be with his biological father? The thought of never seeing him again makes me sick, but I also want him to be happy. I'm furious with Rebecca for lying to me for so long, but more than anything, I'm heartbroken over Adam. Biology doesn't matter, he's my son. I've loved him and raised him for 14 years. Can that just be erased? Despite feeling humiliated and betrayed, I've thought about reaching out to Rebecca's family or mutual friends. But I feel like a fool, what if they all knew and kept it from me? I don't think I could handle that on top of everything else. I'm also angry at Adam's biological father. Where has he been for the last 14 years? Why is he showing up now? Did he know about Adam all this time? I have so many questions and no answers. Like you, I'm worried about Adam. He's leaving behind everything he knows, his home, his friends, his school. Is this really what's best for him? And who is this man, his biological father? Does he love Adam the way I do? Can he be the father Adam needs? I can't bring myself to go into Adam's room. His dirty clothes are still in the hamper, and his soccer trophies are on the shelf. It feels like they left in a rush, leaving behind pieces of their life. I'm writing this post because I don't know what else to do. Has anyone else gone through something like this? How did you cope? Is there any chance I can still have a relationship with Adam? Thank you for reading. Just getting this off my chest, even to strangers online, gives me some relief. I never thought I'd be in this situation, but here I am. Life can change in an instant, and you never know what's coming. It's been a few months since my original post, and I wanted to update everyone on what's happened. First, I want to thank everyone who supported me through the hardest time of my life. Your kind words and advice meant more to me than I can express. Not long after my first post, I received divorce papers from Rebecca. Even though I was expecting it, seeing it in black and white hit me hard. It made everything feel so real. Once the initial shock wore off, I realized I had to fight for my rights as Adam's father. I couldn't just let them take him without trying. I found a lawyer, though it was financially tough, especially with Rebecca and Adam gone. My lawyer warned me it would be an uphill battle since I wasn't Adam's biological father, but I was determined to try. The court process was brutal, far worse than I imagined. David, Adam's biological father, is extremely wealthy, and it quickly became clear they would fight dirty. Rebecca and David painted me as an absent father who worked too much and wasn't around for Adam. They twisted the fact that I had two jobs to make it look like I was neglectful. They argued that David could provide Adam with a better life, private school, vacations, everything I couldn't give him. Friends of theirs even testified that they had seen me act angrily toward Adam or ignore him. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Everything I had done for my family out of love was being turned against me. The two jobs I worked to support them became neglect. The camping trips Adam and I cherished were dismissed as cheap getaways. Despite my lawyer's best efforts, it felt like we were losing at every turn. David's money seemed to change everything. They had expert witnesses testify about the importance of biological ties, and child psychologists said Adam would be better off in a stable financial environment. I prepared myself for the worst, for the possibility of losing Adam forever. The thought of someone else raising him, calling him dad, was unbearable. There were nights I couldn't sleep, lying awake thinking about all the moments I would miss. But then, something unexpected happened. The court decided to hear from Adam. My heart sank, I was terrified they had turned him against me. What if he said he wanted to live with them? I could barely breathe when Adam took the stand. But what he said next changed everything. I want to live with my dad. My real dad. The one who raised me. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Adam went on to say how much he loved our camping trips, how I was always there for him, even after long days at work. He talked about how I helped him with his homework and taught him to ride a bike. He said I never missed a soccer game and always made him feel loved. Then Adam dropped a bombshell. He revealed that David and Rebecca had been coaching him on what to say. He overheard them late at night, planning how to make me look bad in court. They told him to say I was always angry, that I didn't care about his schoolwork, and that I neglected him. Adam said he couldn't go through with it. He knew it wasn't true and refused to lie about the father who had been there for him his whole life. He even mentioned overhearing Rebecca and David discussing bribing my co-workers to testify against me. 
They wanted to make it look like I was a bad father. The courtroom went silent. Rebecca and David were in shock. The judge asked Adam several follow-up questions to confirm everything. Adam stood by his statements, detailing the conversations he had overheard. The judge was clearly disturbed by what he had heard. He called for a full investigation into Rebecca and David's actions. Their lawyer looked uneasy, and I could see Rebecca and David frantically whispering to each other. After reviewing all the evidence and Adam's testimony, the judge took several days to deliberate. Those days were some of the longest of my life. I was hopeful after hearing Adam, but I was also scared to get my hopes up. Finally, the day came for the judge's decision. As we gathered in the courtroom, I was a nervous wreck. The judge began by acknowledging how much thought he had given to the case. He said that while financial stability is important, a child's best interests are determined by more than just money. He praised my dedication to Adam, noting that I always made time for him, despite working two jobs. He also expressed serious concern about Rebecca and David's attempts to manipulate the case and coach Adam. In the end, the judge awarded me full custody of Adam. He said that Adam's wishes and well-being were his top priority and that I had proven myself to be a caring, dedicated father. He also granted the divorce and ordered Rebecca and David to pay my legal fees, given their unethical behavior throughout the case. The relief I felt when the judge made his ruling is indescribable. I broke down in tears as Adam ran to hug me. It felt like a huge weight had been lifted off my shoulders, and I could finally breathe again. In the weeks since the ruling, Adam and I have been adjusting to our new normal. We're living in a small house, and while things are tight financially, we're making it work. Adam even offered to get a part-time job, but I told him to focus on school and enjoy being a kid. Adam has been incredible throughout all of this. He's in therapy to help process everything, and I'm so proud of how strong and mature he's been. We've had long talks about family, trust, and what it means to be a parent. It hasn't always been easy, but I believe this experience is making us both stronger. Rebecca and David have visitation rights, but Adam has made it clear he doesn't want to see them right now. I'm letting him take the lead on that. I don't want to force him into anything he's not comfortable with. Our therapist has suggested starting with supervised visits when Adam feels ready. I'm also in therapy, trying to work through the anger and betrayal I've felt. It's not easy, but I'm taking it one day at a time. I'm starting to believe that even in the worst situations, good things can still happen. I've adjusted my work schedule to be home more with Adam. My bosses have been understanding, given the circumstances. Money is tight, but being there for Adam is worth every sacrifice. We found our rhythm, and most nights, we cook dinner together, even though we're both terrible at it. We're learning, and we're having fun in the process. We've also started a weekly movie night, watching all the classic films I grew up with. To everyone who offered advice and support on my original post, thank you. Sometimes, your kind words were the only thing that kept me going. To anyone else going through a similar situation, stay strong. The truth has a way of coming out. I'm looking forward to the future, just Adam and me. We're planning another camping trip this summer to make new memories and reconnect. I know there will still be tough days ahead, but as long as we have each other, we can get through anything. Thank you again for everything. Your support has meant more to me than I can say. Here's to fresh starts and the family we choose.